All right, what's up, guys? I'm Sean the Bro. We're doing a quicker, less formal video this time. So I'm actually in the process of moving. So basically, uh, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be setting up the side scroller uh, fighter game that we have our our fighter. We're going to be setting up the character select screen for it. So if I show you, this is what you've had up to this point where we've had uh, characters that can jump around. You have your different classes, the mutant hitboxes, all that good stuff. But we never had a way for you to be in game and set the character. So we're going to do the example work of that today. We're not going to actually be able to select the character and spawn them. Uh, what we're going to do today is just have the characters here, the character select screen here, with whatever background we want. Um, I just put a black image. And what we're going to be able to do is actually navigate between these boxes. And when we navigate, you could select and all that. Uh, we won't get into spawning today simply because I just don't have the time, but I did want to get a video out to you. Um, and I figured we could start with the designer portion and a little bit of logic for the character select screen since this has been a very popular and uh, requested video. And then we will get into the actual logic of using the C++ that we made earlier uh, a few episodes ago to actually create the, or to spawn the player. So let's just get into it. This will be a pretty short video. So all you got to do for this, and I'll close out some of the stuff we don't need to avoid confusion. There we go. So to, all you got to do for the character select screen is just make a widget blueprint. So you can right click and go to user interface at the bottom and widget blueprint is the last one. Or go here. Again, you can't see it just because the way I record, I need my audio down below. So I don't have the full view of my computer. But yes, if we, we might be able to hack it here if we pull all the way up. And you still can't see it. But, yep. So if you just go down to the very bottom tab here, it's user interface, and then just go to widget blueprint. Simple enough. Okay. In the widget blueprint, I added a black background, which you could obviously put whatever you want, but all I did for that is put an image and just had the color at black. <laughs> It's pretty much as simple as it sounds. I did set the Z order to negative 100. That way it would always be in the uh, background. That way nothing that we put would end up being behind the background because obviously the background is supposed to be the thing all the way in the back. And then I have a canvas panel, which basically allows me to put in any character boxes that I want. I plan on having like 10 characters as an example for this game. So... 10 characters is fine for now. It, it might not even go that far. We might only have like the mannequin, the mutant, and I have two characters from Everglades. Don't worry, Everglades, I haven't forgotten about you. <laughs> I appreciate your work so much and for sending it to me for use. Um, it will be in the next character select episode. Uh, like I said, I did not forget. I just have not had the time with moving and all that. So uh, we will have at least two characters from uh, Everglades. And I also have the Archer in here, which is a character that I touched upon on one of the earlier episodes that we ended up downloading the FBX animations for and things like that. So we'll have at least five characters that we'll put in here. Uh, we might end up putting more, but the amount doesn't really matter. Put in however many you want. But I have a canvas panel to hold that, and then I just made a bunch of other canvas panels to hold the individual boxes. I stacked them in two. The whole reason to use canvas panels here is basically just to organize this stuff. So I don't need these, but I figured if I want to have uh, two on top of each other, I should have the distance between them the same. So to do that, I use canvas panels. So I can just use do math, like literally just do math positions and have them all be spaced out equally, which is what we want because that's what looks the best. And honestly, I think this one is still bigger, this gap right here. So I think I still did my math a little bit wrong, but maybe not. It might just be a visual effect. Anyway, that's all I did that for. And then I have something here that I wanted to get out today, but again, I just haven't had the time. I'm going to have the characters spawn in and render here. That way, when you select your mannequin, they will actually come up in a fighting pose. Like if you choose um, 
you know, Tekken, they have, like, the still image. In Mortal Kombat, I know they kind of spin around. Uh, or some characters, like, come up from be below the camera, like, cool animations here. Uh, I, I'm going to do that and put that in the tutorial. So I have two images here, um, which they actually shouldn't be images. We're actually going to spawn... We're either going to do it in an animation or spawn the model. Either way works. The model is the better way to do it, but it's more costly. Anyway, um, we will get into that. I made them invisible for now simply because I haven't had the time to complete them. But if you tune in for the next episode, you'll be able to see that. Okay. Now, uh, what we're going to do, it's pretty simple, but just have images in here like you already see right here. These are all just different images in the canvas panels. And then put the profile pictures, as I call them, or their little icons, in here as the brush, the brush image. It's as simple as that. Now, uh, as you saw earlier, if we are to add it to our, so if you go to your blueprints, level blueprint, you can test it. This is not where you should put this. But this is where you can put it for easy testing. It's where I test all my widgets. So if you go to your level blueprint, you can just do event begin play. Right here. I think it's this one. Yep. There's a few events that have similar names depending on if you're VR and, or not. So make sure you do have the right one, the right begin play. But then you can just go ahead and create widget. Right here. If you've been watching this tutorial, we've done this a bunch, so no problem. But, and then just select your character select screen. And make sure you add it to the viewport. Otherwise, if you don't add it to the viewport, then you can create it all you want, but you won't be able to see it, which could be what you want, actually. But in this case, it's not. We want to be able to see it. So if we compile and save, whoops, if we compile and save, you'll see this is up. We don't currently have a way to exit it, but you realize something we are missing. We're missing navigating between the characters. So if you want to be able to do easy navigation between buttons, you can do logic and blueprint and or code, and it's honestly pretty easy. But Unreal actually makes it so you can even do a, you have navigation if you select anything over here. Like anything in your designer view, pretty much. I think it's everything. There might be a few things that don't have it, but. So, uh, I did some quick edits here because the way I want to do it with images and show you is not the way that I thought was the best way to do it. So I switched it up a bit. And what I did was include buttons behind the characters, which we can go ahead and make invisible if you don't want to see them. But what we can actually do now is use these navigation things down below on the buttons. And when you press left on your keyboard, you will go back to character button one, which is this button. And when you press right on your keyboard, you will go to character button two, which is this button. So these buttons go in with the canvas panels as I put here. But yeah, so there you go. And instead of uh, keyboard focus, what we should really do here is set user focus, not that one, set user focus, there we go. Um, you can get the local player controller for this test. We will make it so that it's separate, uh, whoops. We will make it so that it's separate for player one and two if you are playing multiplayer, so don't worry about that. We can do that in the next episode even. But there you go, and what we can check is if this has user focus. We do has any user focus for now. You just plug that into your branch. You'll see that we have user focus. I clicked on the screen, so I lost it. If you don't click on the screen, you can still click the right mouse button, lose it, and then click back to the left and you'll see it again. See that and you can actually see the little uh, highlight if you look close right here you can see that this button uh, kind of highlights as you hover over it and there's also a dashed line to show you which one you're indicating uh, so there you go that'll be the last thing we need to do for now uh, we will make the border a lot nicer to look at. That way you can tell that you're actually over the over the button. And it will actually make it look like you're over the image. And we'll probably make the button invisible. Uh, but if you wanted to do that real quick, you could look at uh, hovered and change the color. Sorry, if I could press it. Or the tint, rather. Um, and you can also adjust all the color and background color of the buttons as well. 
So for example, if you're hovered, you could change the tint to be red. And then when you go over it, whoops, it'll change to red. There you go. So you can do a lot with these buttons and we're gonna be seeing a lot of different uh, things in the future that make these characters really come to life on this character select screen. Sorry I couldn't do more today, guys. Just pretty busy, but that should get you started on everything you need to have a functioning character select screen um, in terms of the design. We will work on spawning the characters in the next episode, and I will also work on making this look nicer with uh, stuff in the background and things like that. Anyway, guys, I'm Sean the Bro. Uh, thanks for watching this video the whole way through. If you are interested in seeing more of the fighting game tutorial or more videos i have a great super smash brothers tutorial uh, that i will show in the icard in the top right if you are thinking about making a smash game like a fighting game that's a battle royale style or like a arena fighter like smash bros or playstation all-stars royale or playstation all-stars battle royale so yeah guys we will continue in the next episode thank you so much for watching again i am sean the bro and i'll see you in the next one guys